Okay, guys, so as I was saying, I had to leave that other church. Um, I mean, hold on. Uma, stop that. Everything's okay. Stop it. I'm recording. Just wait. So, um, no, I was saying that uh, uh, I had to, I had to um, address the matter with the second, in, um, the second incident, incident that happened at the other church that I was attending. And then the, 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 uh, the pastor dealt with it, and everything was fine after that. And so, you know, yeah, God was helping me. God, God was helping me with my authority and... Oh yes, I forgot to mention that my the the, the prophetess that that um, contacted me the uh, the one that I mentioned in my first in the first part of this video the, the that prophet that contacted me she said that um, God was training me up was trying to train me up in my authority um, in dealing with the the the, the one, that one leader that was bothering me from that one church. And, and then she said that, but when I went, when I would start attending again, I would become stronger. And that's what happened. I did get stronger. I, I got stronger. Even though I didn't, I didn't report what was happening because of the reasons that I mentioned, I, I did get stronger because I wouldn't back off. I, didn't, I wouldn't back away from verbally telling these people, you know, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. I had always dealt with it that way, but I was a bit I was a bit more aggressive this time. Not that I was soft in the beginning. I wasn't soft. I was I always made myself very clear, leave me alone. But the second you know, in this when I when I when I returned, I was a bit more aggressive. And even, you know, with being more aggressive, some of them they didn't listen. So I just ended up leaving because I didn't think that I would be believed. And, but in that time, so th this happened some years ago, in that time I have really, really, you know, gotten a lot stronger in, in my authority and things like that. And God is still building me up in many areas. He's still building me up in my authority. He's still building me up in many areas. He will never stop finished building us up. We will never be finished here. We will never be finished. As long as we are on this earth, He will there will always be, we, we will always need to be made better and better every day with every year, you know? So, um, yeah. So, anyway, the topic about this, you know, what I'm talking about is the, the state of the churches. And so, you know what, guys? I'm Catholic, right? So, and I will always be Catholic. That's, my identity is not in Catholicism. I, that's just, you know, that that's just the, the 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 faith that I grew up in. So I will always I will always consider myself Catholic. Okay, and so when I started going to churches outside of the Catholic Church, uh, w whether it was Pentecostal or United or Presbyterian, um, I went to several just just to, not not just to check them out. I just went to several throughout the years. And then I'm like, like well, after after like seven years ago when I rededicated my life to Christ, I I went to the those other denominations. <laughs> I just went to to other ones, right? And I started noticing, you know, the the same thing in all of them, harassment from married men. And I'm like, is this what it is? Is this? I know that the Catholic Church has its problems with with the priests and everything, you know. I know that. But just because the Catholic Church has its problems that has been exposed doesn't mean that the other denominations don't have their deep-rooted problems that will not at one point be exposed. So I'm wondering, do these other denominations, is the problem in their denominations like rampant sexual harassment? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I couldn't believe it. I, I'm not, I wasn't used to, like guys, I was not used to the customs of these other churches where you go in and and you mingle with each other and I'm not used to that and guys I'm still not used to it that's just me I grew up in the Catholic faith and in the Catholic faith like in, in the Catholic organization in, in in the community when you go to the church for you guys I mean you for you guys that are Catholic you know what I'm talking about 
But when you when you go into a Catholic church, you sit there and you listen to the the message, and you you know you you take you you're taking it all in, and you're listening, and you're worshiping God. And then when it comes time to show everybody, you know, say hello, you you turn around and you'll go over to somebody and lightly shake their hand and then go back to your seat. There is no mingling or gathering or anything like that before the church service or after. That's not a part of, it's not a part of our, our of, you know, of how things are done in the, in, you know, in the Catholic faith. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I don't like it because of what I've seen and what, what I have experienced in, in churches that do these kind of things. I don't like it, guys, because for, for me, like what I saw, the, this kind of mingling, it, there, there are opportunities for, for people who don't respect their marriages to, like the, the mingling and gathering and everything, what I see, what I saw with my eyes, is it's an opportunity for married people, whether they're men or women, it's an opportunity for them to go and, for those that are, um, who don't respect their marriages, it's an opportunity for them to go and harass people. They like to go up there and uh, they, they like to touch people's bodies and 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 grab your hand for, you know, as if, oh, hi, how are you? You know, without your permission. I experienced all this. You know, I experienced men walking up to me and just grabbing my hand and I'm like, excuse me, hello. You know, that that made me furious. This is the kind of thing that I was experiencing and I was addressing it. And it did stop when I addressed it. But other kinds of other forms of, of the harassment would continue. So the, I, I don't like it. I, I don't like when the, when the pastor says, you know, go and, and uh, go and hug somebody. No, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in hugging. No, 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 no. I know that's, that may be, um, it might sound offensive to you, but I do not believe in hugging in, in church settings, no. If, if you're not my father, if you're not my brother, <laughs> I'm not gonna hug you. <laughs> okay, if you're not my mother, if you're not my, my grandmother or my grandfather, I'm not gonna hug you. But if you're my close friend, like my female friends, yes, I'm gonna hug you. If you're my cousin, I'm gonna hug you. If you're my uncle, I'm gonna hug you. But I'm not gonna hug you if you're not related to me. Because like I said, the, the, the churches that have the custom of gathering before or after the church in, in, the, in the room where they, you know, serving drinks and, and, and you know, food and that, those are places, th those are opportunities for those who don't respect their marriages to harass and sexually harass people. The reason why I say it is because I lived it. And also I have seen it. I have seen these kind of, these, these, these people who don't respect their marriages approaching other people and just grabbing them without, like they ambush the person. They will ambush the person with a hug or they will ambush the person with, by grabbing their hands or grabbing their arms and just pulling them into their body and giving them a forced hug. And you can just see the person like, uh, what, what, what's, what's going on here, what? They don't even have a chance to, to give permission as to whether they wanna be handled that way. I saw this, okay, I'm not making this up. This is not what I've seen on shows. This is not what I've, I've, I've been listening to from other people's testimonies. This is stuff that I've experienced. I've experienced it personally many times, and I've also, I saw it, I witnessed it in the churches, in all of them that I was in, all of them. I witnessed it in all of them. I never, I've never witnessed this in the Catholic Church. No, no Catholic Church that I've ever been to, I've witnessed this because that kind of contact is not our custom. So you don't have, you don't, you don't, you know, the people that, that don't respect their marriages don't have the opportunity to abuse in those settings. It doesn't mean that people that don't respect their marriages are not going to the Catholic Church. I'm saying that because of our customs, those kinds of, um, those scenarios don't happen because the Catholic Church does not, they don't, include gathering before the church or after the church of people talking and mingling with each other that that that's not a part of the service so those that setting is not there for these people who don't respect their marriages to take advantage of of others 
So that's why I, I don't, guys, when, if I do not believe, you know, going into a church and hugging people. No, I don't like that. I don't like it. It's not right for, like in the Bible, God, uh, there's a verse, I don't know who says it, but greet, greet each other with a holy kiss. Now, a holy kiss is something that is God, it comes from God. But you can't tell somebody who doesn't respect their wife or their husband to greet somebody else with a holy kiss because that's not their intention. Their intention is perversion. So this is why, you see, God, what God meant for good, perverts are using it, taking advantage of it to abuse people in the churches. That's why I do not like this thing about gathering and, and, and hanging around before the church service or after. I don't like it. I never liked it. I know that I was, I did it in the beginning a lot, but then I started, I just stopped going. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I never liked that sort of thing. And a lot of my Catholicism is still in me. Like it's actually 100% of it is still in me. Now, when I say Catholicism, a lot of you are probably thinking, oh, you believe in Mother Mary and you wait, you worship her and you do the rosary and you pray to, you pray to people that are dead saints and, and, and you, you kiss the Pope's ring and, and, you, and you say six Hail Marys to make sure you get into heaven. No, people, no. Not all Catholics believe in the same way. Okay, not all Catholics believe in the same way. All right, so even though there were statues in some of the high schools, like in, in, in Canada, okay, we have, you know, we have statues and all over the place, like in, in our cemeteries, we have statues and in our schools, we have statues and photos and things like that. But let me tell you something very interesting. Every Catholic school that I went to, like, um, like I, I went to from, from kindergarten, well, I didn't go to junior kindergarten because junior kindergarten, Junior kindergarten starts in, at, when you're four, but we came to Canada when I was five, so I, I had to enter in senior kindergarten, and then you graduate in grade eight, and then you go off to high school. So I went to two schools, right? So elementary school, and then high school from grade nine to grade 12. And some people graduate at grade 13. Now it's called, what's it called, guys? OCA, OAC, or something like that. Um, Ontario Academic Courses. Ontario Academic OACs. Yeah, I think it's, they're called OACs. So whatever Catholic schools that I would enter into, like whether mine or my brothers or my friends, like to go visit or whatever, elementary schools, I always felt very strong presence of God. But if I entered into the schools of some of my friends who went to public schools, there was a void. It was a vacuum. God's presence was not there. So that's why I'm saying it's very interesting, although Catholic schools, like our Catholic school didn't have any statues, um, elementary school did not have any statues, but our high schools did. And God was still there. God was there because our primary um, belief was in the rock, which is Jesus Christ. Without Jesus, you can't have God or the Holy Spirit, right? That's our main core, our belief is Jesus Christ. He's the son of the living God, right? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So when I would go into public schools, I, I, it, it was very awful because I'm like, well, hold on a minute. Where's God? I, I, he's not here. I felt like um, it, was, it was just an awful feeling because he wasn't there. But I would enter into Catholic schools, whether it's elementary or high school, and the the presence of God was there so strong. God and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus, very strong. So, you know, I could care less about people who say, well, you Catholics are cults. <laughs> You're cults. No, we're not a cult. You, you just have a very, um, you have a misunderstanding of what it is to be Catholic because you didn't grow up Catholic. Right? And for you people who grew up Catholic and you're no longer Catholic, you know what I'm talking about. Some people that are Catholic went through a horrible experience but that's not everybody's story. That's some people's story, right? So there's nothing wrong with being Catholic. Anyway, 
So, you know, I just don't understand. I mean, back to the condition of some of the church churches. Well, the, the back to the condition of Christianity as a, as as a whole today. There's just a lot of um, it's 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 at its worst state than it has ever been in at any other time in the history of Christianity. Because, like I said in 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 my other like the other parts of it to this video. Christianity is not what it was like when we were little. Or it's not like it was like in way before we, when we were born. Today, in Canada, in the United States, you know, Chris, the word Jesus to people is an offense. To them, it's a bad word. No matter where you go, you, you, you can't even say the Lord Jesus anymore. You can't say his name. You know? And so, just make sure... Just make sure that you're always asking the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to guide you as to which shows to watch, which which places to attend, like uh, services. Like for example, if you have a friend or if you meet somebody new and they say, "Hey, I'd like to welcome, I would like to invite you to um, this church," and but you're not too sure about it, just ask the Holy Spirit. You know what? You can say, "Look, you can say, Lord." I don't know if this is the right place, but if it's not the right place, I'm going to I'm going to attend this church. But if it's not the right place, then please show me you know, just tell me, give me a sign that it's, I should not go back there. Or you might even want to say you might even want to ask the Lord, say, "Lord, I don't know about going. I'm very uneasy. I, I feel uncomfortable because I don't know if I should or should not go. Um please let me know." And then he will give you an answer before you go. You can tell your friend or your family or whomever it was that invited you, maybe a relative, you can tell them, well, I, I'm going to ask the Lord to see if, this, if it's okay. And then you wait for the Lord's answer. And then depending on what he tells you, then you do it. You know? That's what you do. Also, I wanted to mention, address something else about uh, another another thing that I don't like about the way some some churches uh, operate like they call like the leaders call the the people in the congregation members like i i mentioned that word because that's that's what that's how they call themselves in these denominations they they refer to themselves as members and i never understood that because like i had no idea that churches suddenly became clubs because i mean you, you're a member of a golf club you're a member of a bowling club. You're a member of the curling club. You're a member of the skiing club, the swimming club. You're members of those kinds of things. But how can you be a member of of a church like a of a, like like a, a place, a certain place that you go to? How can you be a member of that? I've also heard, you know, pastors saying, "Well, you you know, they start making announcements, and they're like, well, this only ref this I'm." They start to make an announcement, and then they, they'll say, this only refers to members. If you're not a member, then you are not included. Then you are not, um, you do not qualify. What is that? To me, that's garbage. So, you know, now, now some churches in, in, these, in some denominations, they're, they're operating where they, they're excluding people unless they're a quote-unquote member. What is that? I, I don't understand that. This is not something that I don't, I don't comprehend that. And you know what? I was watching a, 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 a teaching from Prophet Seer. He's a seer. Sadhu Sundar Selvaraj, okay? In one of his, his videos, he was, dis he, was, he was explaining about the state of the churches today where there are all the churches have now incorporated or or they they have added all these these activities like the women's club the men's club the widowers club the children's club you know what i'm saying like they have they have all of these activities and they call them clubs right and and sadhu was saying this is not what God wants. He, he, the, the church never originated with 
with um, putting all these, what are they called, subsections or whatever, in the church where you have all these clubs for diff different things. He said the main reason for the church is to tell people about the Lord and to minister to people in whichever way they are needing. And of course, if there's going to be, like in today's society, if there's going to be, if there's going to be activities, okay, but there's too much focus there's too much focus on these clubs. They have made these clubs a major artery of the of of the way they 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 operate, like the operations of the of the ministries. And Sadhu's like, this is not what God wants. This is nonsense. And when I came across this video, I said, you know what? He's right because I I did not I never understood it either. I never understood, you know what. What is this? I remember one time when I was attending this one church, the people, some of them kept harassing me. I mean, they were harassing me. They were like, we want you to come to the women's group. I said, I'm not going to the women's group. I don't need to go to the women's group. And they're like, no, 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 you, you have to come because you, you, you will really get nourished and you're going to, um, you'll find some really, you, you'll get ministered to really well. And I said, I don't want to go. And I kept, you know, so many people were telling me it's good for you to go. And I kept telling them no. You know, and, and it was, it, guys, the harassment, it was harassment because when you tell somebody, when you tell, when you tell people no and they continue to insist and insist, that's harassment. So I had to go to the main leader and tell and ask them, please, this is what's going on. Will you please do something about it? So they did something about it and the harassment stopped and then it started again. And I told these people, will you please leave me alone? Please leave me alone. And eventually they left me alone. Right? So, like, I, I don't know. I, I, I just, you know, guys, sometimes, guys, I'm not trying to offend people who are not Catholic, okay? Uh, people who are dealing in, in, these, in these other denominations. But the things that I saw, I did not like them because of what I experienced. Now, maybe some of you are very happy with, I mean, some of you have grown up in these denominations where, you are accustomed to mingling with other people before the service and after the service. You're accustomed to, you, you grew up, you know, going to these different clubs that your churches or however many churches you went to, you grew up in these, these clubs, right? This is something that you're accustomed to and you don't mind it. And maybe you have seen things that you don't like, but you're, but as far as you're concerned, it's a part of your culture, not the bad stuff. I'm saying that the, 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 the way that your, your, you know, your, your denomination operates, you know, everything that I just mentioned, maybe that's just the way that like you're used to that. that. That's a part of your culture. That is a part of you, who you are, right? So you don't mind attending a church that has these clubs and all this mingling and all that because that's what you grew up in. That's, that's what you grew up in, so you don't mind that. But it's not what I grew up in, and so I don't like it, especially because of what I've seen, the abuses that take place in these kinds of settings. That's why I, I hate them. I really hate uh, these, these kinds of, um, you know, the, the, what I mentioned earlier about gathering and before the, church, before the service and after. I don't like them, and I don't like the, the idea of hugging. No, I don't like that. I, I, I wouldn't even encourage the, the, the ladies to hug each other not because weird stuff is happening between them, but it's just as a as a rule to to not in, to not encourage those who want to abuse, right? As as a rule to 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 discourage those who want to abuse from abusing, then not not even the ladies should be hugging. You know, so that's what I think, and I'm right. Sorry if I sound arrogant, but I'm right, because I know what I've seen. I know what I've seen. And when the Lord said to greet everybody with a, with a holy kiss, because of the perverts out there who are willing, who are willing to throw themselves at taking what the Lord said as an opportunity to abuse, then that's why I don't agree with it. I don't, not that I don't agree with what, what he's saying, but I don't agree with, with, churches uh, uh, encouraging people to greet each other with a holy kiss or to hug because of those perverts. 
they take advantage of what the Lord said about greeting somebody, greeting people with a holy kiss. Because of them, I don't think it's a good idea. It, in fact, it's not a good idea. It's not a good idea because of the people who abuse. You know? Unbelievable, just unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable the state of the churches today. You know, I, I was I was in shock, guys. I was in complete shock. And also when it when it comes to, you know, the state of, of churches, God did give the Catholic Church a very long time to correct itself and it didn't. And so, you know, an explosion of, of exposures happened. And now there are a lot of people, a lot of priests that have been exposed for a lot of very serious crimes. You know, the, 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 the leader, which is the Pope, I mean, in the, of the, the, the lead, I'm, I'm talking about like, he's not the leader of us. He, Jesus is the leader of us, okay? I'm saying the one who's leading, um, the, the one who represents, uh, how do I say it? The one that people, like the people in, in the Catholic faith, they look up to the Pope, right? Because he is the one that is, is supposed to be leading people, right? But because they... Historically, they, they did nothing about the abuses that were happening. They were covering up, you know, covering up for the people that were abusing. The abuses continued until one day God exposed it. And it, it turns out that there are many, 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 many people that were affected by, you know, the, 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 the priests that were doing things. I don't know if nuns were doing it, I don't know, but the majority, it seems, were, were, were priests, you know? And so, anyway, so, that's why I was saying I don't, even though, you know, the, the Catholicism has its problems, you, you know, people can't always just be pointing at Catholicism and pointing at what, what, was, what was discovered about Catholicism, because, guys, based on my experience, the rampant sexual harassment that goes on in churches that are not Catholic, okay? It's there. It is there. Because I went to several different denominations and I experienced the same thing everywhere. And it can't be, it can't, I mean, it, it can't be that perhaps sexual harassment is not the biggest thing that's happening. I don't know what is, what is the, the, the greatest crimes that are happening within churches that are that are other denominations than the Catholic Church. I don't know what their biggest crimes are. All I know that the Catholic faith was, you know, the Catholic Church was discovered to have been, you know, to, to, to be co to covering up for these priests. And now what is going on with the churches that are outside of Catholicism? You know, it's only a matter of time before the stuff hits the fan for those churches. You know, so it's not like, you know, it's not right to pick on the Catholic Church just because of, just because God exposed them, because there is a ticking time, a clock, that is happening for every church that is not Catholic, that is outside of Catholicism, that their sins are going to be exposed for what they were doing. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's sexual harassment. I don't know what it is, guys. I'm only going off about going off of what I experienced. I don't know, but it could be that because I experienced sexual harassment in many denominations outside of Catholicism. Okay, my, my camera's gonna stop. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to stop here and come back.